Hi there, I'm Drew Badger, the world's number one English fluency guide, and it is a pleasure to welcome you to another advanced listening practice lesson. Anyway, let's get right into the lesson. Today I want to talk about, actually, uh, a lot of people ask me questions about, especially this series of uh, videos. They say, wow, how can you just talk like that for, you know, five or ten minutes without having a script or reading anything? Honestly, I'm not, there's no script. I'm just sitting here in a chair in this room, and I just uh, enjoy trying to help people learn and so I think maybe that kind of motivates me in a way to think of things to say uh, typically the way I speak about these lessons is I have a general idea of something I want to talk about uh, in the case of this lesson I'd like to talk about actually making these kinds of lessons and how uh, I'm trying to give you examples of speaking fluently, but I want to talk more specifically about how I'm actually doing that as I'm doing it. So it's kind of a weird lesson, but just talking about how I'm actually speaking fluently uh, while I'm speaking fluently in the lesson. So hopefully this is an entertaining video for you, but I just wanted to talk about a few things you can do to practice so that you can start developing, developing this same habit. So the first thing you can do is you can actually take the same thing and just express it in different ways. Now this is something I did a lot when I was first getting fluent in Japanese. I would just take a sentence like, uh, this is red, and then I would just ask myself like, oh, is this red? Is it red? Is that red? Is that not red? And I'm taking really just one or two changes in the sentence and just asking the same thing or saying the same thing over and over again. So let's say I'm, uh, here's a, just a pen that I have with me here. So if I'm going to describe this in English, uh, so this is a pen. Is this a pen? Yes, it is. This is a pen. And uh, it's a black pen, a long black pen. And I don't have to say anything complicated about it. I'm just talking about uh, the basic descriptions of the pen as much as I can describe it. So you want to try to wring as much out of a particular object as possible all of the information that you know. So to wring something is like when you have a cloth and you have water in it and you wring it out and all the water drips out the bottom. So you want to suck all of the information out of something even very simple and the fact that this is simple it helps to uh, constrain your thinking so to focus your thinking on a particular thing when people start talking in conversation lessons I notice a lot of them they're talking about politics or something like that and it almost gives you too much information to discuss and that shuts your brain down so the reason I take a very simple object like this and lately I've been making these uh, this other video series where I'm talking about specific things like describing uh, a pen or whatever uh, maybe a shirt or a hat or shoes or something but I'm just trying to take something very basic just to show you that you really can develop fluency and you can actually improve just by describing little things like this so again I'm talking about pen, uh, a pen in this case, a black pen. This is a Pilot Super Grip 07. This is a pen that I got here in Japan. So when you begin describing something, you begin by practicing just to speak longer by talking about a particular object for as long as you can. So ask yourself questions. This is a black pen. Is this a black pen? Yes, it is. So even if it's a question that you know the answer to, the point is just to train yourself to speak for a particular length of time, like maybe for five minutes, or if you can't even do that, for 20 seconds, and then try to speak longer and longer. So even if I'm talking about this pen, like, look, I've been talking about this pen or something related to this pen for, I don't know, two minutes or something like that. And there's nothing amazing about what I'm doing. I'm not even using... Uh, a really complicated vocabulary. I'm just talking about the basic shape of a pen in the way that a basic uh, native speaker would, or maybe not a native speaker, but somebody that's uh, just learning the language that's learning. This is a long pen. This is a pen. Is this a pen? Yes, it is. This is a pen. Is this a cat? No, it isn't. It is not a cat. So I'm just, I'm even just saying sentences that maybe don't mean anything. It's, there's no real relevance in my everyday life to talk about, is this a cat? No, it isn't. But the point is that I'm using the language so that I become able to use it for a longer period of time. So when I do that, I'm training myself to, to start thinking of ways of responding to questions or to start thinking of things I can say in a particular situation such that uh, they appear to me automatically. So what I'm really doing, and this is the second part of this, is I'm thinking about what to say as I'm saying something else. So if I, I start talking about one thing, it's generally 
uh, creating ideas in my mind about what I want to say next that are related to that thing. So I have kind of a particular goal that I have, like in the case of this video, my goal is to help you uh, speak more at length. So to speak at length means to speak for a long time and really just to talk about things. It doesn't matter what you're talking about, but just to get into the habit of being able to speak for an extended period of time about something. So even something as simple as a pen, if you can't talk about a pen for one minute, then it's going to be even more difficult to talk about politics. I know that sounds really weird because really there's a million things you could talk about with that, but the idea comes back to focusing your mind and when you have too many options, options to talk about things, that's what really kind of trips you up. So uh, in general, in my own mind, I'm thinking about what I want to say as I'm saying something else. So right now, if I'm talking about this pen, in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, okay, is this leading me to the main point? Is this like kind of staying attached to that? Or is this going off on a tangent, as I sometimes do in this series? Uh, or is it helping people? Or now, can I talk about like the pen itself? Can I talk about the shape of it? Can I talk about how it was made? <clears throat> excuse me, or uh, where it was from, or, you know, maybe how long I've had it, something like that. There are lots of different ways to approach discussing even something as simple as a pen. So I know people think, well, this is kind of boring. We're just talking about a pen. There's nothing amazing about that. But actually, the point is, again, just to use something simple like this. And sometimes I'm reiterating, I'm speaking again and again about a particular thing because, uh, again, this is part of being able to speak at length. And part of that is really when you're trying to make sure you're connecting with the audience and making sure they remember something because you do have to repeat things over and over again to make sure that your point is heard. Often people that are like really fantastic marketers uh, and this is a problem I have because I have a I have a like a tendency like to try to go into a whole bunch of things and teach a whole bunch of information but really it's best to keep things simple and just to repeat those pieces of information over and over again so the first part of this is to take a basic object whatever that is and just try to think about approaching it from a few different angles so approaching it from a few different angles being how it was made where did you get it how long have you had it um, or even like, what else could you do with this pen? Or like, you could tell a story that's related to this pen or pens in general, something like that. Oh, my father used to work at a pen factory. And I'm just, I'm thinking about ways to connect this pen with other things. And the more connections you can build, the more you practice doing that, the more your mind will automatically do that when you're just in regular conversations. So here I am, I'm talking about this pen, but at the same time, in my mind, I'm thinking about different ways to create ideas or connect ideas with this pen. So this pen is a very simple object, but it's only simple if you think about it that way. If you think, wow, this is actually a really cool thing. It's got lots of connections that are uh, helping me talk about or bring other things into the discussion, into the conversation, then wow, like it actually is a pretty interesting thing. So this, uh, this is actually a uh, pen that I got from the, uh, the president of a local company. He was saying, hey, thanks so much for doing some great writing for us. Uh, and he gave me this pen. So actually, that's not a true story. But this is just a great example of how you can even just make up a story just for the purposes of explaining something. Now, right now, I'm speaking quite quickly because this is an advanced listening practice lesson. But let's slow it down for a second. And we'll just take it more to an intermediate or basic way of describing something. So again, I really just want to make this very clear for you. While I'm talking about this, I'm thinking of ideas in my mind that are connecting with this thing. And at the beginning, when you start doing this, this is red. Is this red? No, it is not. Oh, this is not red. This is a black pen. This pen is black. This is black. This object is black. Now, at the beginning, I'm just saying things that are talking about the description of it, uh, physically describing the pen, uh, but I can talk about how I use the pen. So I use this pen for writing, or I don't use this pen for brushing my teeth. And I'm just using ideas that are helping me connect this thing while in the back of my mind, I have maybe a few, it's almost like a program that I run. So can I talk about the history? Can I talk about the use of it? Can I talk about maybe where I receive this pen? Something like that. But this is how you train yourself to number one, speak at length, but also to get your mind thinking so that you're not in a conversation thinking, uh, 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 
And this is really a skill that you can develop in your own language because it helps you understand how it works, just the process of being able to think about things. So I think even a few people have commented below, like what I'm doing right now, people, they can't actually speak about something for, you know, more than a minute, something like that, even in their native language. So if you can develop this habit, a lot of the habits I developed uh, that helped me got that helped me become fluent or helped me get fluent are the same things I used in order to, like, be more successful at my everyday life in English as an English speaker. So being able to walk up to people I don't know and say, hey, like, can I get directions to uh, a particular location? So let's say I'm an American because I am an American, but I'm in a different city like Seattle or San Francisco or Cincinnati. It doesn't matter where I am. If I have a uh, very weak confidence in general for walking up to people and saying, hey, can you help me uh, give me directions to a particular place, then I'm going to be lost. But if I don't have that problem, I can just walk up and say, hey, excuse me, uh, can you help me find, you know, whatever this place it is I'm looking for. So this is a skill that I developed in my native language that I now carry over to using when I'm in uh, speaking in Japanese. So because I don't have a problem asking people I don't know about, hey, where is this or where is that, something like that, even if I make a mistake in Japanese, I don't have a problem asking people for help. So this is the kind of thing just in the same way that you can practice speaking for a long period of time. And right now, here's just like a little thing that's that's in the back of my mind. As I'm describing this, I'm remembering an idea or I'm remembering a time from maybe my fourth grade when uh, we had to give presentations in front of the class and just stand up for a minute and give a presentation about whatever we wanted to. Actually, uh, the kind of tricky thing about it was we couldn't prepare for it. I think uh, like all of the students just wrote, you know, the name of some object or something like that. It could be a person or an object or something. Um, down on a piece of paper, and then the teacher would pull out at random a piece of paper with the name of that thing on it. And so the student had to stand up in front of the class. Uh, so all, it's already embarrassing, you know, standing in front of the class and being the one that like everybody is looking at because, you know, as a kid, that's pretty scary and embarrassing. Uh, but also, you didn't really know what exactly it was you're going to talk about or how you're going to describe it. So now I don't have a problem doing that at all, but I remember getting up and I even, like, the funny thing about what I did, so this is back in, again, like, fourth grade, and I'm uh, sitting there and my name gets called and I'm like, oh, shit, like, I don't want to get up in front of the class and, you know, I'm going to say something stupid. Now, the interesting thing about my case is that they actually pulled the card that I wrote. So even though I wrote the thing and it was about plants or something, I just wrote like plants on it or something. Uh, and like, I couldn't speak for like a minute about plants, even though that was the thing I wrote. I think maybe I was uh, really nervous about it, but it just goes to show. So this is an example of something. It goes to show that, uh, if you don't practice doing this, it's not something that you would be able to do naturally for a lot of reasons. Number one, because it's kind of embarrassing if you make a mistake, if you don't know what you're talking about, or if you can't, you know, be able to speak fluently and and, and continuously about something, then you maybe feel or seem a little bit awkward. But also it just shows like uh, you're not quite prepared for what it is you want to speak about. So in my case, I was standing up there and like I was thinking about plants, like how do I describe plants? And I was like, okay, they have leaves and, you know, your, your, your mind gets focused on like, what I don't know or like all the information I don't have. But if you think about restricting your information to something very specific, okay, let's go through the list. I want to talk about what this object looks like, what are the physical properties of it, and I try to talk specifically, as specifically as I can, about as much of this pen as possible. So I could talk maybe even just describing this for, I don't know, 20 minutes talking about how it was shaped and uh, like the, uh, the interesting mechanics of the pen on the inside so we could open this pen up. I could, uh, let's see if it even opens up. Okay, so you have to unscrew the front part. We've got the actual ink cartridge on the inside, uh, and there's a spring here as well, and we can talk about the spring action of this and how it uh, opens and closes. It's got the front little case made out of plastic here. Uh, this, uh, this case is plastic. Uh, looks like clear plastic, or you could call that translucent. It means that the light can shine through it, so this is clear. It's not opaque. So the opposite of that, again, when you're talking about things, whenever you describe something, you can always talk about the opposite of something else. So maybe like instead of saying, like, I have a smile on my face, you could say, I don't have a frown, something. I don't have a sad face. So when you maybe know some vocabulary for something, you actually have like twice the vocabulary because you can describe something one way or you could describe it in a different way. So I'm actually going to put the cap back on this uh, and then put the ink back inside the actual pen itself. It's got a rubber 
guard on it. So this is uh, like the hand grip right here, a rubber grip, and it's got uh, it's a couple of lines on here so your hand doesn't slip, and you can push on the top here to load the actual pen. So to keep the pen from uh, coming out and maybe writing when it shouldn't or getting ink when it shouldn't, you can release it back into the pen. So it's actually a really interesting mechanism. Uh, and again, I'm, I'm like, obviously I'm a fluent speaker and my vocabulary is probably larger than yours, but these aren't things that are difficult to learn. It's just being interested in something like this and recognizing the potential of even something as basic as a pen to give you a lot of practice with your fluency. So these kind of two things I'd like you to think about for the video. Again, I'm repeating things. I wanted to come back so we talk about some things and I try to repeat them at the end to make sure they're remembering or you're remembering them that they are memorable. Uh, so this one is, uh, the first one is when you're trying to think about uh, describing something just to develop the ability to speak at a longer rate or uh, for a longer period of time. The most important thing is just to take something simple so it, it doesn't get your mind thinking about a whole bunch of things that like, again, like with politics or philosophy, these become much more difficult to talk about. You just want to develop the habit of being able to speak for a longer period of time. And you do that by just describing something as best you can. This is long or this is longer than uh, a pencil, this is longer than a mouse, this is longer than an eraser, and make as many sentences as you can just to get to the process of, of being able to speak like that automatically. And the more you do that, the more you will actually develop fluency to be able to speak about maybe even more complex things or even, you know, like the things like philosophy or politics. But really, uh, when you're in a situation where you have to talk about philosophy or politics and you don't really know much, that's your opportunity to learn. So ask people what their views are and why they think them and like you're, you're kind of doing the opposite approach where you're again like, What's the physical thing they're talking about? What's the history behind that thing? How is it connected to other things? You're thinking about all these things at the same time. And then the second part is that when you're thinking about things, you're asking questions, you're also in the back of your mind because you've been practicing, you're starting to get more ideas so that you always have something new and always a new direction to take people in. So this is exactly what I do in my master English conversation lessons when I'm sitting and uh, talking with people about particular things. Now, most people, they come onto the program uh, or they join me for a video and they're a little bit nervous because people are, you know, it's kind of new for many people to be in front of the camera and speak without any rehearsal. And the reason I don't have people rehearse is because I really want to have them uh, be fresh and being able to say things that it's like a real conversation. So that's why we don't rehearse anything for actual conversations in Master English Conversation. But anyway, so people get on the program and they're feeling a little bit nervous, but I'm there to direct them. So whenever they talk about something, <clears throat> excuse me again, I need to drink some water. I'm like talking too much over here. But anyway, uh, so when people are on the program, maybe they don't know exactly what they want to speak about for a particular thing. They're thinking, okay, like I, I've been asked about like maybe what my job is or my boyfriend or girlfriend or something like that, but I don't know what else he wants me to talk about. So that's when I'm leading them onto something else. Oh, that's interesting. It's interesting how this connects with this other thing. So your job as a person that's trying to learn how to speak another language is to learn to find as many connections as possible. But there are easy patterns to this. And just as I showed you in this video, look at me, I'm talking about a pen and other things like that. Like I have no script for this at all. But it's just because I'm using connections between things and this is exactly what you should be doing to get fluent. So remember, to number one, you want to speak about something for uh, as long a period of time as you can, even if you're just saying the same sentence over and over again with a slightly different way, like like this pen is longer than a mouse, this pen is longer than an eraser, this pen is longer than my foot, if that's true, whatever, or this pen is not longer than my, my foot, this pen is not longer than, you know, uh, a snake or something like that. So I'm just trying to, like, again, get into the habit of speaking about something continuously. So that way uh, I'm training myself to look for connections and I'm, I'm doing that kind of um, intentionally at first, but it becomes automatic. It becomes something that I can do, my brain does subconsciously when I'm speaking. So if you can do the same thing, and even if you're practicing first in your native language, that's particularly uh, helpful, uh, then feel free to do that. Then practice in your own language first, but then go back to English and start doing the same thing. T take a look at something like this and try to like even just write down all the things that you can describe about this and get like very specific. If you want to start with writing, that's perfectly fine too, but it'll get you to think about things almost like a template. What does it look like physically? 
Where did it come from? How was it made? What is it connected to? This looks like something else. This brings back this memory of this other thing I had when I was a kid. And all these things are examples I've given you in this very video. So go back, watch this video a couple times. Actually, it's a really important video. And if you're watching this, you're still watching this right now, I applaud you. That's fantastic. You've been sitting here watching me speak for like 20 minutes. I can't believe I'm talking for like 20 minutes about this video. Anyway, uh, that's uh, it for this video. I don't want to give you too much information, but hopefully, I've given you a lot of hope and shown you some very specific ways that you can develop your fluency. Well, now I need to go relax and get some water and uh, soothe, soothe my throat because I'm speaking too much over here. But it's been uh, a pleasure. Hopefully I'm giving you some really great tips here that are helping you express yourself more fluently. Get out and practice. Don't just sit here like this and watch these videos. I want you to get out and use what you learn. Start picking out anything like when you're on the bus or you're at school or you're at work, you're visiting your family while you're having dinner. Look at even something like chopsticks or a fork or a knife or anything specific like that and just start talking about it. Like even if you're just talking in your head, that's just fine, but that'll get you to start speaking more fluently. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Do give this video, you know, 20 likes if you can, or tell like all your friends and family, hey, you should like this video because this is a really important video that will teach you how to speak fluently. Again, fluency is not about learning a whole bunch of words. It's about the habit of speaking such that you can speak continuously. And while you're speaking, you're also thinking about other things to say. So you never run out of things to talk about in conversation. You'll never be boring again, but just kind of as an aside, this is when you want to speak. The other time, it's really important to listen. So be sure to listen, especially when you don't know what's happening and you want to learn a bunch of new vocabulary. Anyway, have a fantastic day. Do become a subscriber to the EnglishAnyone.com YouTube channel if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye. To continue learning, click on the link in this video to download Speak English Naturally, our free guide to speaking and sounding like a native English speaker. The guide reveals the three most important kinds of conversational English you must learn if you want to sound native, and will help you experience instant improvement in your fluency and speaking confidence. To download your free guide on a mobile device, click on the link in the upper right of this video. To download your free guide from a computer, click on the link in the lower right of this video. I look forward to seeing you in the guide.